Interestingly, he was arrested for foreknowledge of the October 1st, 2010 bombing that claimed the lives of 12 people in Abuja. The Abuja High Court later found him guilty of three counts charged, including terrorism, and subsequently he was convicted for life imprisonment. After serving 14 years uh, term, Ebuare was finally released. He regained freedom from alleged role in the 1st October bombing. On this followed the granting of a state pardon to him by former President Mahmoud Buhari and was ratified by the National Council of State. Well, joining us now from Bielsa State in the studio, he's here to share his experience in prison as well as how life has been like after leaving the prison walls 12 years after. Hello and good morning. You're very yeah. much welcome to the program, sir. Good morning. It's Thank wonderful you. to have you. Thank you for having me here. I really appreciate it. Well, firstly, mm -hmm. let's uh, get down to business. How would you react to the fact that you were supposed to be in within the four walls of prison for the rest of your life? Somehow, 12 years down the line, you were asked to go and now a free man. 14 years down the line. 14 years down yeah. the line. You, you see, if you are an innocent person, you fear nothing and your conscience is clear. From the beginning when I was convicted, I knew I'm innocent. I said I'm coming out. And I've not stopped while in prison to blow the trumpet of my innocence. If you are guilty, you will feel it. You will not have that mind. Your conscience will be judging you. I'm not guilty. I know nothing about the October 1st, 2010 Independence Day bombing. bombing. And the government know. Those people that framed me up, they know why they did that. And they know from the beginning that I know nothing about it. Do you care to yeah. share why? Maybe, probably. Because in the midst, in the midst of, uh, in the group, there are people that will be jealous of you. There are people that are ready to sell you. It happens to, it happened to Joseph. Now ask why. Is it because of my vision? I shared too much my vision out to people. I think that was a mistake I did. I trusted people. I never knew. I'm a peace act, uh, advocate in Niger Delta. I carried people along and we achieved the, the amnesty program together. Collectively, I worked. It was not the problem of the DSS. It is those people that call, they call themselves my brothers that they sold me to the DSS. At the end, they did their own findings. They saw nothing. What they have to do to justify what they did was to say I had prior knowledge. Prior knowledge. Prior knowledge. Having prior so knowledge. So not a direct involvement. Not, not, not a direct now, involvement. Now, 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 while, while, while the trial was going on, you denied all the charges leveled against you. Where were you when the blast occurred on October 1st, 2010? I drove to Banex. 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 We'll say too. Yes, we we'll say too. To buy the green, white, green jersey for my late mom. Because she was at the race course in 1960, I promised her 50th, the 50th anniversary, mommy, come from the village. Let us attend it together. I bought the jersey for her and myself. As I was coming back, I heard of this bomb blast. People, you know? Yes. Issue. I was about going to the arena. Unfortunately, I found myself as the victim. My innocent self. Why will I? Somebody that worked for the amnesty, for crying out loud, I worked for the amnesty from 2007 before government, the proclamation. That's in the Niger Delta. Yes, 2009 it came. I went to the creeks under rain, under sun. I sensitized people, even at the point, me and my, my, my team, our boat capsized in the middle of the sea. I did all the sacrifice. I saw peace. You know why I took to this uh, uh, venture? No. Because they criminalized the struggle. Some, some hoodlums came into the struggle. They were into piracy. So those people, they know themselves. And they are not far from those people that frame me up. 
What was your yeah. occupation before? I was into I was into estate in management in Abuja. Yes, that was what I was doing in Abuja. And you had absolutely nothing to do with the bombing. Nothing. The, 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 the claim was that you were aware that uh, it was going to take place. Uh, now that you are here, yes. live on television, yes. did you have prior knowledge that that bombing was going to take place? If I had prior knowledge, I would not send for my mom. To come there? Yes! <laughs> Just check it. I would not send for my mom. If I had prior knowledge, I'm close to Mr. President, the former president, and let me say it here, he was the one that even helped to pay my, 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 while I was in the university, my final year school fees he paid for me. Former president? Yes. Good president. luck, Jonathan. Yes. He's a father. I have access to him. So, so why will I work against his government? I never had any knowledge. I don't even know the people. I have not seen one on one the people they accused together with me. Well, well, while you were in prison, 14 years is a lot of yes. a very, very long time. Yes. What do you, what can you say the experience was like for you, considering the fact that you were supposed to be there for the rest of your life? But in 14 years, how did you manage to keep your spirit strong, My your sanity. mind, your sanity intact, yes. and now you are out yes. a better man? Yes. You know what I did? They, they seized my memo. I was writing memos. Daily memo. I was writing my mother seized it. So what I did now was to start writing songs. And by the special grace of November 7, one of my songs will be out. Well, this, congratulations. Like mention for attention. You, you understand? So I started writing songs. I wrote 365 songs. I wrote in poems prison. here in prison. So I was in solitary for five years. What will I do? I've read the Bible back forth, back forth four times. <laughs> so I started writing music. So, but one other thing that helped me, my wife was on social media. She was very, very loud on social media, telling people. So, anytime I see, I come across it, I feel good that they are talking about me. Yes. And some good persons, some good people in Niger Delta, they started working towards your you know, you know, uh, um, going on rallies and all the rest. Somebody like uh, architect uh, Miabi Bribina. They led people to work for my freedom. They, uh, there was a rally 2017 in Bayesa and Abuja. Well, well you, you claim that freedom. the president was not even around the Eagle Square when the bombing took place. And you also said that he was or still is like a father figure to yes. you. Sponsored you through university. Yeah. When you were eventually um, sentenced to life imprisonment, I believe the president was aware. Was there any decision taken by him to sort of intervene in the situation? I must say, at the point, may so rest in perfect peace. Uh, the CSU told Mr. President he visited me in prison. Will you visit a guilty person in prison? Will you visit a terrorist in prison? God also, boy, he cannot visit without the consent of Mr. President. Yes. He visited me. So they said they will process my freedom via pardon. I mean, it came, but it took time. It took time. The process, I was in there. They transferred me to Sokoto, 2007, 18. From Sokoto to uh, Katsina, 2020. I spent two years there. Uh, from Katsina again, I was transferred to Kaduna before I came out. So that, it was a process. The next government that came, started another process. His Highness, Mr. Rest in Private Boy Tari Diangolo yes. from Baisa State, he met with the uh, uh, Malami Abubakar, AGF. So that process started. So I think if they want to say we are giving you a pardon, without the president, the former president meeting, they had the state of council, state council meeting. He was there, so he approved it. So. Uh, His Excellency, good luck, Jonathan, approved it. Have you met with him since leaving? I prison? have not. If I have a chance now. I intend to meet him. But you know, no, I'm, I'm now a victim of stigmatization. Yes. Even my state governor don't want to see me. I will say it openly. Senator Doi Dio is a good man. But I don't know in my case. He, we are from the same local government. We are like brothers. Yes. Officially, nobody has seen me. 
No executive has seen me in, in, in the entire Niger Delta. You were arrested alongside Charles Oka and Henry. Oka. Yeah. Where, where are they right now? Are they still in prison? Uh, I don't know where, where Charles Oka I was transferred to Sokote, was transferred to Medigui. Henry Oka is in South Africa. And you, you, you think... Uh, you, you think that Charles is probably still in prison at the moment, or he, perhaps he has regained his freedom as much as uh, you and Henry have? No, they are, they are there. Myself and I have in South Africa. South Africa at yeah. the moment. I'm knowing this because they, they paired us together in a case. Well, let's uh, move it on ahead. The way forward, yeah. what, what, uh, is it, what is next for you? I know you said you are releasing your song uh, yeah. sometime this yeah. month. And, yeah, uh, November 7th. Yes, we, November 7th. We yeah. look forward to Thank listening you. to some of your renditions. Yeah. But apart from the song, uh, what is the way forward for you now? What is next? Yeah, uh, uh, you know, as a, an activist, uh, this is my calling. I love Niger Delta and I want peace on Niger Delta. Even though I've been rejected by my people, they reject me. They betrayed me, but the passion I have, I'm, I have a vision, I have a dream for Niger Delta. So I'm still working to sustain the peace in Niger Delta. And let me say a quick, quick one. As I came out, there's something I must leave region by working towards to sustain the peace. I must commend the National Security Advisor for a job well done in this surveillance arrangement they are doing. Because we are having problem of pipeline leakage and all the rest, you know, we are facing. So now with this security um, surveillance in our area, people are well engaged. But we need to also improve on that, yeah. more funding for this contractors you understand so that the engagement will take people off the street it will take people out of this you know, some criminality some in criminality our creek. In, the, in the creek you understand see for instance yes. in my federal constituency there's a, a a problem there something that nobody most people are not aware of which is uh Kul federal constituency yes. there's a clan called Biseni clan that Bissini clan, right now there's a leakage, gas leakage. In the area? Yes! And people, nobody has, has talked of it. The, the issue the, of environmental hazard yes, has that. always been a, a big problem in the Niger Delta, right from the time of Ken Sarah yes, and, yes, and the rest. Yes, But most times, right now, because of the surveillance, it has lessened. Yes. But right now, people are suffering there because that Bixeni clan was not captured in the surveillance. Bixeni clan in, in what community? Mention it Bixeni, again. but there's Bixeni community, that Bixeni, that clan. There are different communities there. But it, it, it is something that has to do with the entire clan. But it, it, a, a close, a nearby clan called Okodia, the Okodias, they have a surveillance contract there. There's a, a pipeline infrastructure, Nigeria Limited, they are covering there. Yes. But this neighboring clan was not captured it was excluded so i'm, I'm and, and my, environmental yes right now place. people are suffering so i want the national security advisor to look into this pipeline uh, infrastructure nigeria limited sh they should try and see if they can also capture have them to their list or their kilometers now, it now, will help now now uh, comrade edmond we have just about uh, two three minutes yes, of yeah. this conversation uh, you came out and you said since you have been since you came out of prison you have been a victim of stigmatization yeah. your state governor doesn't yes, want to yes, see you yeah the former president your godfather doesn't want to see you yes and i believe some of your friends have yes. perhaps deserted you yes right now on air what will be your message to nigerians about who De uh, Comrade Edmond Ebiwari is 14 years after prison. Yes, I, I work for the Amnesty and, and I want to stand, keep on working to make sure there's peace. It is something I've signed for and uh, I want everybody to work collectively with the Amnesty Director, Dr. Otuaro. That Dr. Otuaro is, I will always say, it's a round peg inside a round hole is good for the job and i believe i've not met him i believe what he's doing is for the betterment of the entire niger delta process for peace and we should all stick by him work with him and i believe even myself i will be involved in that process because i've not been reintegrated i have so many people 
And my followers, they have not been reintegrated because they blacklisted me when this whole thing happened. But it's a new person on board now. But not that it's not experience. He, he has the experience, is grounded. So let us work together and ensure that the, the peace, we get, enjoy the dividends of peace in Niger Delta. All right. I want other thing. Let us engage yes. our our indigenous companies. There are people that are into oil and gas. We should engage them in Niger Delta project. They are not foreigners in their own land. They cannot be foreigners in their own land. This is how we can sustain the peace in Niger Delta. All right, Comrade De De Edmond, I must thank you so much for you. availing yourself for this discussion. Uh, now that uh, you have laid out these informations, bear I believe Nigerians are better informed about who Comrade Edmond is. Yeah, thank you thank for you. the opportunity given to me. Thank I appreciate you. So much. God bless you.